Welcome back to the Four Funsies Podcast. I am Mech, and I am accompanied by my friend Johnny, and this is the Four Funsies Podcast. Today we are accompanied with our friends no who doors. we've met before, No Doors, as well as our friend here that this is our first time on the show, uh, Pretty Flocko. Today our discussion is what makes a good game versus what makes a bad game. And uh, at the same time you get to watch us, uh, or you get to watch me rather, play and uh, fail at Fortune Street. So, Johnny, why don't you start us off? <laughs> All right. So, the rules of the podcast are simple. Um, we've done little to no research on the topic. We don't have any Webster definitions. Um, we are shooting from the hip here. This is just a casual conversation you would have, only we're recording it with people who have played a wide variety of games. We are uh, with our panel people who have different ages, different experiences, and different likes. So... As each panel talks, maybe they'll talk a little bit about themselves, kind of give you some background, so that way you, the listener, get some perspective on where they're coming from. But basically, what we want to do is kind of break down, in the opinion of us and, you know, the gaming community, what makes a good game versus a bad game? Is it sales? Is it emotional attachment? It could be any number of things. So, let's just start by saying, let's discuss what makes a good game. What do you guys think make a good game? Just superficial off the top, Flock, I'm going to pass the mic to you. What do you think makes a good game, based on your experience? Um, based on my experience, I think what makes a good game is a game that you could continuously play over and over again. Uh, in my experience, I liked games like Super Smash Brothers. That was a game that I could play with my friends, mm -hmm. and that was just a very fun thing. Like There wasn't necessarily a story or anything like that, but whenever my friends came over, I could play it. I could play it by myself, and it would be endless. There would always be new characters to unlock. There would be always new things to do. All right. So, like a general, not necessarily a general, but you know, replayability, so to speak. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you can only play a game over like so many times, right. like if That's it's like discovering something new. Right, right, right. But I mean, if it's a game that you can continuously play with your friends and right. still have a good time and still be eager to play it, you know, after you're done. So that's, that's to me, what makes part of what makes a good game. All right, yeah, no problem. So be able to play with your friends, new experience each time. Doris, what do you think is one or a couple defining characteristics of a good game? For me, a good game is something that even after I'm finished playing it, I want to hop back on it again. I know for me, back in the days, playing a game like Pokemon, you had gyms to battle, you had monsters to raise, and by the time you got to the end of it, you didn't want it to end, so... You went to the Elite Four, or you were fighting against other people. You were trying to collect the more monsters you could. So that made a good game. A game that you don't want to stop playing, but a game that you want to you don't want to stop playing, but when you do stop, you can't stop thinking about it. Okay. I think I know I know what you're talking about. Like uh, recently when I finished Persona 4, it um, it's like I wanted to play again. I, or I wanted to go ahead and take advantage of the new game plus, but uh, I tried to exercise restraint in that. Anyway, Johnny, what's your opinion? <laughs> All right. So, um, I mean, if I had to pick a good game, um, I'm gonna dig in the crates. I'm gonna go with Sonic 2. Okay, and and here's why. Um, for me, that was a great game because it was a improvement over the original, which established a baseline for what you're gonna expect. It didn't change the formula too much. And at the young age I was when I was playing it, it was easy for me to pick up and play. Um, and it provided enough new challenges. You had Tails now, you were able to go Super Sonic. There was a lot of things you could do that you couldn't do in the original one that made it a fantastic game. And much to your guys' points, it had the couch play. You know, I had two people that could play uh, at the same time. I had the replayability. Uh, levels were huge. You can take different paths to the end. But it was also stupid challenging at the end. Like the challenge at the end, was it ramped up amazingly. So it gave you this feeling of accomplishment as well as replayability. So I think what makes a good game to me is a game that lets you feel like you accomplish something when you turn it off. You didn't just sink your time into something and, oh, well, I just wasted it. I think games that, that give you some level of uh, completion, some level of, of, of um, award, not reward, but award, like, all right, I did this, you know? I think that's, I mean, it kind of contradicts uh, replayability, but not really. I think it works hand in hand. You know, like, I'm, I, I, hit, I had a goal and I hit it. So I, I, if I had to pick a game, I would say Sonic 2, and subsequently Sonic 3 was good as well, but Sonic 2 came first, so just give it respect to what it deserves. Okay. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and mine in. Um, 
I will, I will say replayability is definitely part of it. Um, but for me, what makes a good game, th I think there's a bit more of an objective uh, system for it. Um, I'm not going to go into too, too much detail about that right now, but it has to have taught me something. Okay, that's an interesting it's way to look at it. Obviously, aside from just game mechanics, um, I'm going to use, for my example, uh, Metroid Prime. It was interesting because it not only did it put the Metroid series in 3D quite effectively, not only in 3D but in first person quite effectively, mm -hmm. but um, it taught me to put the clues together myself over, over having the story just relate to me. Okay. Um, another possible example I would give, because I, I mentioned before how much I love not only uh, you know Metroid, but I love Shin Megami Tensei. Um, the mainline SMT games taught me something about myself on uh, who, I guess in the grand scheme of things, if, you know, if everything went to crap in the world, who I would end, which radical ideology I would end up siding with by accident. Okay. So, so that's what I learned. Yeah, and that's awesome. So if I had to kind of condense this in review, uh, Flock, you basically were saying some things that allow you to play with your friends and have new experiences almost every time you turn it on. That That is one of the defining characteristics of a good game. Uh, doors, you were saying replayability and something that makes you think about it even when you're not playing that drives you to come back and play it. Um, Mech, you said you want something like something objective based and then also something that challenges you to learn something, learn something different, do something different. Yeah, educate well, I was making you. the case that there's like an objective, there's a way to objectively decide whether a game is good or not. Oh, okay, well, so that's what you're bit. saying. Well, I'll, we'll get into that. Objective, Dude, subjective, yeah. Well, right now, I just want to kind of, again, establish a baseline of where we all come from. And for me, it was more of accomplishments, things I can get done in the game, make it good to me. So, as, as Mech kind of touched on, there's two ways to look at what's good and bad. And we're not going to talk about bad games, because we're not really here to bash things, per se, like we did. We'll talk about the good games, but we'll touch on what makes a bad game. Yeah. Um, but let, let's look at things objectively versus subjectively. You have the uh, you have your phone? You want to pull that up and just kind of define that for me? That's right. I know we said we're shooting from the hip here, but let's, you know, make sure we're, our facts are, are grounded. So what is objective? Yeah. Objectively is a central philosophical concept related to reality and truth, which has been variously defined by sources. Okay, and then we are look at subjectively. So while he's looking that up, objectively being able to point out if a game is good would have to look at basically facts, right? Yeah, it would have to fit certain caveats. All right. Uh, subjective in a way that is based on personal feelings, tastes, or opinions. Right, so these two almost directly contradict each other in Pretty a sense much. of a stance, right? Yeah. So I think that is the basis for this podcast. We're gonna be looking at games subjectively and objectively to define what makes a good game, what makes a bad game. Okay. Okay? That sounds like worth you, objectively. <laughs> yeah, that, that's our you, goal. You might even make it sound like a game. You might even sound like a game. So, Doors, what would you say is objective criteria for a good game? A game that's very intense in the beginning but it's very short you enjoy the beginning and then before within four or five that. hours it's repetitive mm -hmm. and the game's over so an intense experience but a short experience correct okay i see so putting as much value as you can within a small period of time small window small window okay yeah. Making the most out of your time. So that would that would make a game objectively good, right? Correct. So a game like Grand Theft Auto, by that logic, would be bad. Basically, because yeah. the first few hours are great because you're learning how to play. You start getting some weapons, ammo, cars. You learn how to do everything. And then you get to a point where all the missions are literally the same thing from the beginning. Okay. Where you're s continuously go and kill this person. Okay, come back. Okay, now go and collect this. Okay, come back. Okay, now go and kill somebody else. Right, so See? it's repetitive. Correct. All Got right, you. But what about Monster Hunter? A game like Monster Hunter is to me is totally different for the fact that you're grinding for weapons and armor. I mean the fact that you Yes, it's repetitive in the fact that you do fight the same monsters, but you fight the same monsters to get the materials to make armor. So that's like the ultimate goal. To get a better weapon, to get a better armor, and then once you start getting in the progressive way, the way thing I do like is that there's different levels of armor. You have the regular armor, you have the R-type, which is just above that, and then 
you have the EX type that's above that, so it's not like you're doing the same, you are doing the same thing over and over again, but you're getting the payoff is even greater because you're working towards a goal at the end of every hunt is to get the better armor, get the better sword. Right, so I, I took a notes and, and basically with, with your logic of an objectively good game, short and intense experiences, Monster Hunter, I guess, could fall into that category because each fight is a short, intense experience versus the overarching game, which can be considered long. Is, is that sound about right? Correct, but again, it's the fact that, yes, it's short and intense because each mission is less than an hour, but again, you're fighting a monster, you're setting a goal to get better armor, which is kind of great, so that's what I think brings back a lot of people. But again, a game like Grand Theft Auto or something similar to that is... The fact that you do a mission, halfway through, you're starting to do the same exact missions and there is no payoff. Yes, you may get a little bit of money, but halfway through the game, you have already have all the uh, all the weapons that you could ever buy. The only interesting thing is probably buying new clothes, which, let's be honest, they don't benefit you in any way. All right, I'm going to have to stop you right there, man. I feel like you've got a bone to pick with GTA. <laughs> but it's all good. You're entitled to your opinion, and I, I love to hear it, but we do have a time. Frame. So, all right. So I get what you're saying, though. Um, Flock, I'm gonna pass it on to you. What objectively makes a good game? What is a fact that you can look at about a game that makes it good, in your opinion? I know it's crazy. What is your opinion on a fact? But what's a fact you can look at? So it's subjective. Not really. No. Okay. No. Because I could say sales. Sales makes a good game. That's a mm -hmm. fact. You can't argue with how much it sold. Right. So yeah. what kind of fact about a game? Like he said, a short experience, a tense experience. Those are kind of facts. If it's you know short, can be defined by time, and tense can be defined by, I guess, what they're trying to get you to go through. So what would you say? I have to kind of agree. I don't mean to kind of piggyback, but kind of based off of what he was saying too, something that's really intense in the beginning, like you know the whole the whole rush of learning new controls, like learning new abilities, gaining new abilities. Okay. Um, like maybe new guns, or depending on whatever game you're playing. But that new all cars, plays, new sports, new DJ, cars, could yeah, be anything, anything. So I feel like that short rush in the beginning is kind of what everybody's like really geared towards when okay. they're playing a new game. At least that's what it is for me. Right. So, you, so that initial hook is yeah, really yeah. okay. Of course, that, that makes sense. All right. So cool. So give me an objectively good game for you. Maybe that maybe you played it. Maybe you didn't like it. But what's objectively a good game for you? Like for for uh, Doris, he said Monster Hunter. Mm -hmm. So are you or actually no better yet? What's the game that fails to meet that objective that you played fails to be objective that fails to meet that objective Like so you said something with a good hook in the beginning mm -hmm. You're learning new stuff. You feel like you're making a little bit of progress or whatever it is. What game completely fails to do that for you? Oof. Man. Um, I'd probably have to say a game that I played on GameCube uh, a long time ago mm. It's gonna sound funny, but it was a super monkey ball. Okay, and it was just like it, it the, the whole the whole thing that I actually have with that is you hear they give you a platform they teach you the controls like right from the beginning and that's all you have to work with throughout the whole game there's no learning new there's no gaining new abilities there's no okay. new adaptation to the storyline it's just you have a platform you turn the platform you do it so you can get to your goal that's really it so for me to answer your question that would be one game objectively back in. all right cool yeah. see this is what i want to i want to get to the heart of it because someone you know might love gta monkey ball and they're gonna freaking <laughs> comment on this and be like what the heck guys but it's just our opinions if you have more opinions please feel free to chime in the comments so mech i'm gonna hit you with the same question man what objectively defines a good game it should be goal there should be a clear goal and that goal should be obtainable within game reasonably that's that's not a bad answer. All right, cool. So, what's a game that fails to do that? Fails to do that. Mm -hmm. See. That's an interesting case because I can think of games that, like, there's a distinction between not being able to obtain it, obtain it because the game is broken, and not being able to obtain it because it just doesn't really end. Um, but I'm going to say I played a licensed game. A licensed game, uh, Happy Feet. Okay. Um, for the GameCube, because my both my mom and my grandma had a weird obsession with that movie, so they bought it. <laughs> and it's really just a bunch of mini games. There's no actual goal to it. All right. Other than to finish levels. 
Got you. So it's kind of mind numbing. Yeah. <laughs> All right. It's, and it was always the same three mini games in the same order. Mm hmm. And um, it was dumb. <laughs> so, Dang. Objective. Objective. All right. Cool. So I said ob it's objectively dumb. <laughs> it's objectively oh a bad game. All right. Yes. Cool. Object so these are my objective opinions. Right. So I'm gonna go with. Um, <laughs> Sorry. No, that's cool. <laughs> I think I think the attainable in-game thing is important. Um, but again, I kind of it kind of goes back to me with a sense of fulfillment and rewarding for my time. So, again, objectively. Um, yeah, I think games with a good loot system will be objectively better than games without a good loot system, and and you can you can twist that up as much as you want because loot system doesn't define a game. But if I'm gonna play a game with a loot system, it's gotta be objectively good. So back to back to like Sonic 2, right? The loot in Sonic 2 was super simple. You collected rings. If you got hit, you lost your rings. The mm -hmm. rings had a purpose, and it was clearly defined, and that was it. If you got enough Chaos Emeralds, you were rewarded for it by getting Super Sonic. Mm -hmm. Simple. Fast forward. 20 years, you know, we have we have games like WoW, fast forward a couple more years, we have games like ESO, uh, or Elder Scrolls Online, for those who don't know what that is, uh, Fantasy Star Online, and we have games like Borderlands, we have games like Destiny, that have all really adopted the loot system, and they didn't pioneer it, that's not what I'm getting at, but they've they've made it to a point where different people can can play with it, even, even games like uh, Black Ops, you know, Call of Duty have adopted loot systems, and I think if that's executed properly, you have a game on your hands that's so well done just for the simple fact that it, it combines the replayability it combines the goals it combines something you can accomplish in game versus games that do it poorly so uh like when division first um was doing this thing and i really wanted I like yeah i really wanted to be part of division man i was team team division i, I signed up I, I went into new york gorgeous game okay but it's a known issue that it had loot problems you know and that was a big draw for the game um, so I guess subjectively would be how the loot system is executed and 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 done. And I want to keep it. I want to keep it objective from there. Objectively, a bad game. Again, unfortunately, Division. You know, would be would be my my. Even though I liked it, it's objectively a bad game for that purpose. But um, so let's transition now into subjective. But before we do, Good, uh, I was tempted to bring up Sonic 06, and I. I I resisted. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate that. And we can put a list of what we think are bad games in the description later. But again, we're not here. To, I'm not here to bash games or or jump on the bandwagon of what everybody thinks is bad. I want to be able to define what's bad and let you come up with your own. So, Doors, why don't you um give us a little history, man? What is the worst game you've ever played? Worst game I've ever played. There's been a lot of them. Um, this might take a while. Give me your top honest, three. Your top three is horrible games. One of the games. worst games that I was so disappointed was what it was Fable Three. Oh, that's for rough. The fact, mm. For the that's fact rough. it was such a great game. I mean, the fact that you were playing as a prince, trying to get his kingdom back, and you went through it all. You got your powers. You went through the leveling system. You uh, could buy homes and mortgage them out and all that fun stuff, and it was great. Until eight hours later, it was done. And after the eight hours, you become king, and there's really no gameplay after it because the storyline ends and you have no interest in playing it again. Whereas you would play Fable 2, and you could continue to go. There was many missions. You, there was an after game that you could play where literally if you made the right choice and killed your dog, you could come back... <laughs> And I remember that. Bring your dog back to life. Kill yeah. your dog. Yeah, you had an option to what it was like. Kill your dog. Uh, get rid of all your. Mo it, was, it was something. You kill all the people or kill, something like yeah, that. Yeah, kill your dog. Kill your family or something like that. And or kill all the people or something. Something silly. Yeah, and so you were you did it, and it actually depending on what in uh, which choice you made, it was an end game, and you could change it all over as soon as you finished the game, but. But again, Fable 3 was such a disappointment to me. There's quite a few other games I remember playing on PS2 that kind of similar where as uh, Mech brought out that you played through it and it was just a pointless game. There's no real goal. There's no more real achievements. It's just re very repetitive. You go and hack and slash and mm -hmm. there wasn't even some of them didn't even have like a save uh type of thing where you go and save the game no you just start the game over again 
hack and slash turn. All right, all right. I know you're talking about Dynasty Warriors. Leave me alone. I love that game. <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna attack, attack my childhood. But no, I, I completely get what you're saying. You know, uh, Fable Three compared to Fable Two was the worst game you've ever played. Yeah. <laughs> all right, all right, Mech. To you, what is the worst game you've ever played? In in a hundred uh, words or less. Subjectively or objectively. Um. Well, we're gonna make that transition, so you can use both right now, because we're gonna transition subjectively here in a moment. We're not talking about best game, right? The worst game you've ever played, or or like like Dor said, the most disappointing game you've ever played. Well, most okay, I can do most disappointing. Let's do that. Um, Metroid Other M. Mm hmm. Because as I mentioned, I like, I like to gush about these kinds of games. Yeah, I and like you and you mentioned Prime was say. was one of your and, favorites. Um, yeah. Yeah, that was a big disappointment. Mm -hmm. Um. The thing is, the gameplay was doable, but okay. not great. The biggest disappointment was, was the story. Um, you could say that they ruined Zambus' character, and they did. Okay. But um, it, the thing is, it could have been good if the story was intended to be like an origin story. Gotcha. But they did it. They chose to put it in between Super Metroid and um, uh, Fusion. Right? So it's supposed to be a mid -quill between those two games. A mid -quill. I've never heard that term before. Yeah. A mid -quill? Okay. And, you know, it's like the super... You know, at this point, Samus has killed really like, what? Ten times? Five, ten times? I've lost game. count. I don't yeah. keep up with it. Even if you don't count the Metro, the Prime game. Right? <laughs> but, um... And then she totally has a PTSD episode overseeing a clone of him this one time. That, that was ridiculous. That's... And as far as the gameplay goes, it just it could have been done better. Okay. It was just the it there were flaws that could be fixed if they made a sequel to it. If they just fixed those flaws, it would be fine. Got you. Now, this is your opinion or popular opinion? This is my opinion. I love it. All right, perfect. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, and then we're gonna go to Flocko real quick. I mean, what is one of the most disappointing games you ever played? And I want you to dig deep. You were hyped for this game. You bought the day it came out. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> so. My most disappointing game it was for Xbox 360. I will never forget it because it's the first game I got when Xbox 360 first came out. Mm -hmm. Before I had all the Red Ring of Death and stuff like that. It was Sonic. That's just with no Sonic 1 or Sonic 2. But it was just called Sonic. I don't know if you guys remember that game. Okay. Um, pretty much, um, it was it, it had regular storyline, you know. Um, except uh, it had a new uh, princess. You know, it was usually he saves Amy and stuff like that. But he had this new human princess that he was in love with. Oh, okay. Right? So that was kind of weird. But uh, other than that, though, uh, the reason why the game was so disappointing was not necessarily because of the story itself. But um, only because, with unlike the other Sonic games, you couldn't really play this with your friends. Um, after you beat the story, you were free to roam around whatever map you wanted. But there was a big problem. There was nothing to do. So, you, I mean, <laughs> you can play the same old missions however yeah. many times you liked. But, I mean, really, who wants to play the same Thanks old mission? Thanks for the sandbox, guys. I can do nothing with this. With no, uh, with no really goal or no reward. Right. Um, not to bash on Sonic, because I love Sonic. But it, this Sonic for Xbox 360 was completely different than the other Sonic games on GameCube. Okay. Or, because I love those. Or even on Dreamcast. Yeah. But that's that's what I grew up with too. But with those games, it was different. There was always you could raise a chow, you could do a whole bunch yeah, of other stuff. Yeah, it was really dope. It was yeah. really really cool. There was stuff to do after you beat the story, or there were secret stories that you could actually mm -hmm. play. Like if you beat Shadow Story, if you beat Sonic Story. This game, it wasn't like that. You had three stories to pick from: Silver Story, which was I guess he was a whole nother hedgehog. <laughs> he had there's only one thing he could do was he had his psychic power he could stop stuff and hold it and throw it that's all you that's had it? That was that's his all mechanic? he could do wow. and on top of that he was slow he couldn't even run fast so <laughs> you had you had i'm sorry, sorry. on the upside you, when you fought sonic you could just throw him around yeah that was stupid i'm sorry <laughs> but anyways but like yeah i mean you you played from three perspectives you played from sonic shadow and silver's perspective and once you play as all their perspectives like every sonic game you usually end up being super sonic super shadow super silver at least in this one that's how it turned out yeah. to be but that sounds cool super silver I mean, in yeah con in i concept. mean there wasn't really much he, the concept is cool but mm -hmm. there wasn't really much that he could do okay but i mean the same thing like he could grab bigger stuff okay but, oh. like, other than that <laughs> i mean um the game was just bad only because there was no replayability at all and on top of that the missions were retarded 
Like, <laughs> I'm sorry. There was really no other <laughs> word I could use to describe it at right. that point. But the okay, stuff well, that you do, they had you literally run errands. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, uh, that was my whole gripe with the game. I felt like it had a lot of potential because the story was really unique. It was really different than all the other Sonic games I've ever played because usually Dr. Eggman's the bad guy. Like, always. But in this one, it was some sort of monster from the future that went back in time to fuse with another monster that, like, just jacked up the whole world. And it was like wow. Silver was like the future trunks of that game because he oh, came from okay. the future to try to warn everybody. But then Shadow and Sonic was like, what? Like, we're not having you know, that. we're not having that. They try to fight him and whatever. But anyways, story was decent, but it was just the gameplay, the quality of the game, the things that had you do in the game. Like, and once you did it, there was nothing else to do. It was just really poor, and okay. that's one of the most disappointing games I've ever played. All right, cool. I exercise restraint. I, I, I exercise restraint in that, and he just comes out and says it. Well, he got a chance to pick his game, fair and I didn't want you to influence fair his enough. decision. All right, fair enough. <laughs> little, little but I like the other Sonics. Yeah, the other Sonics were way better than that. Yeah, I agree. A little side note: I actually still haven't beaten that because the I'm on the last level, and it just drove me crazy. I couldn't, I couldn't finish it. Ah, uh, <laughs> gotcha. Like just rage-inducing. Got you. Um, Alright, cool. So, I guess I'll answer the question. It's only fair. Uh, one of the most disappointing games i played in recent memory is going to be No Man's Sky. That was an absolute no disaster of a game. Yeah, well... Bioshock? Huh? It's not Bioshock, no. Oh, yeah. Or Bioware. It's a uh, new developer, Hello Games. Uh, they came up with a game called No Man's Sky. The whole premise is you travel the galaxy, you, you can go to worlds and explore them, and sky's the limit, literally. Right? Um... Day one, this thing was riddled with bugs and just real poor execution. And uh, whatever, man, I'm not going to get too deep into it. But look up the any history of No Man's Sky. One of the most disappointing initial launch day $60 investments I've ever made. So, like, awesome $60. idea, poor execution. <laughs> Amazing idea. And I'm coming hot off of Ark, which did it in a prehistoric into tech. So I was like, dude, space? Why not? Yeah. We can battle multiplayer and, and I can have a space pirate colony. <laughs> None of that happened. To this day. So anyway, I digress. They've come a long way, but one of my most disappointing games was No Man's Sky. So that that takes us into Act Two of this podcast. I really want to look at the subjective uh, way to look at a game, right? So as as Flacco brought out for us, subjectively is based almost entirely on you, on your perspective of it, right? No facts are needed. Like like the way you know Eddie was talking about GTA. We don't need any facts. So the reason why I wanted everybody to talk about the most disappointing games is because a lot of what disappointed us about those games was subjective, was subjective right? But we don't talk freely. So, um, Dolores, what do you think is subjectively a bad game? So basically, forget the facts. In your opinion, and this is only how you play games, what makes a bad game, a bad experience for you? A bad experience, well, nowadays with the fact that a lot of things are downloadable games and stuff is just the wait time you expect that okay. nowadays you should have to wait five ten minutes to get into a game or wait for it to load up or the fact that it is sometimes glitchy things shouldn't things like that shouldn't happen and as you were bringing out several games no man's sky division they have to send out a patch to fix the game or revamp it and it's, to me, it's kind of, if that's the case, you should have never released the game, or it was premature to release, because they didn't work out all the bugs, they were just trying to get your money. That's good. And it makes me not yeah. ever want to play that game, let alone look at that developer and say, hey, you know what, another great game that you developed, I'm still not going to buy it until weeks later when everybody's tested it and made sure it's worth buying. Sure, right, alright, uh, yeah. You're actually going to go up to them and say that? What's Why Twitter's not? for? <laughs> Why not? I'm, All right. I'm paying you 60 something dollars for a game. I shouldn't have any complaints. I should be able to just turn the game on. She get a completed playing. game on release. I wish the world worked that way. It used to. A long time ago when we had cartridges. <laughs> you got what you paid for. Yeah. But, um, okay. Right, let's go back in history. Let's, <laughs> yeah. let's, let's screw this graphics. Yeah, yeah, right? Give me my sprites. All right. I'm trying to obey my thirst with Nintendo. So check it out, Mech. Um, again, what is the. Subjectively, what creates a bad experience for you? Pass. <laughs> okay. Pass. Um, That's kind of, We can come back. Yeah. All right. So I'll, I'll just chime in with one of mine. Um, a subjectively bad experience for me is paywall, right? I, I think when you create a paywall for features in the game that dramatically enhance or cut time off the game, 
I think you're creating a bad environment and bad experience for gamers. Because you're basically saying, here's a great game that we put a lot of time into, but we don't have enough money yet. So we're going to hide the best of our content behind microtransactions. Now, microtransactions to me are not inherently evil. I They serve a purpose, and I'm game. I've bought things in-game before. But I think it really goes into pay to win. When you have a pay to win concept, to me, that subjectively destroys a game. And that's just my opinion. It could be a game I don't like. It could be a game that I do like. But I think if I could spend money and give myself a distinct advantage over another player, um, I understand. I understand it. But I feel like that subjectively destroys the game, the integrity of the game. Now, if I can pay and it's still skill based, then have at it, which is where you get cosmetic items and stuff like that from. But if I can buy, if me and if me and Flocker are playing Smash Brothers, right, and I can buy invincibility for 10 seconds by giving them a dollar every match, I'm invincible for the first 10 seconds. Like what? <laughs> That's not a real thing, obviously. Bravely, but bravely defaulted that. Did that really? Yeah. That's a real thing. Yeah. Or well, you know, doors, you know, uh, bravely second buying the SP. Okay. You don't. Yeah. You can beat the game without it. But. Right. Yeah, they, like, Bravely Default had several... Well, it's a kind of a new concept to me, the fact that you can play it on super easy mode, mm -hmm. or you can actually turn off all these things and not even enable them to give yourself a challenge of a classic RPG. Okay. Anyway, yeah. sorry. Uh, no, that's cool, but in a single-player experience, if they want to take my money for things that enhance my single-player experience, then so be it. But when you get into a competitive gaming, I think the, the pay-to-win thing it really hits home. Okay. That's All right. Good. That's, that's a good point. So we're gonna transition over to Flacco. I'm gonna give you a little, little more time I, to think. I, oh, you got it? Yeah. Oh yeah. Please. Um, all right. Well, I know I've uh, mentioned before my issue with uh, mentioned gimmicks before, and what I don't like usually is when a gimmick catch when you know like gimmicks are okay, but then when everyone starts copying it, that's mm -hmm. a problem. One gimmick that I really don't like that everyone has been copying really lately is crafting systems mm -hmm. i i hate crafting systems i it in games where it, it's always in like games where it just doesn't make sense right like, in Zelda, like if it's shoehorned in there to, you have to collect bugs to make mix a potion now okay um or you have to cook things um when i was playing apotheon you have to collect random stuff you find after you kill something and use it to build a potion okay or something or a fire or bomb or whatever Monster Hunter, as much as I love the game, it, even I have issues with that. Stick to your guns, man. Yeah, it is yeah. what it is. You like, can still like I a game love, and hate I a part of it. I excitement of it. And when you have friends with you to help help you out, it makes things go by really smoothly. Okay. And you don't mind it so much. There are ways to make this, the crafting system a little easier. Mm -hmm. And I will admit, there is some satisfaction when you build that perfect weapon. Okay. But I still don't like crafting systems. All right. So... So, let me ask you then, is Monster Hunter a good game or a bad game? It, ooh. It is a good game. Okay. There's no right or wrong answer, it's right. just purely your opinion. Right. You can like a bad game. <laughs> but It is a good game. But a bad game, that I would say, that also uses a crafting system. Or I should say, it's a game I don't care much more for. I did at first when I first got it, but then I was like, oh, this is boring. Uh, Terraria. Oh, wow. I would be down to play more if there were more people, because I would like the survival aspect of it. Mm -hmm. But when you're just by yourself, it's the, one of the most boring experiences. Ever. Okay. It's because of the crafting system? Yep. The gotcha. Because you have to keep going through things to craft things. It's gotcha. Boring. Okay. All right. So crafting systems in general distract from what you think is make a game good. And Terraria is just a really piss poor example. <laughs> all right. In my opinion. No, this is all it is. This is an opinion piece. You know, it's rare is still a game people play. Yeah. Plago, what, in your opinion, takes away from a gaming experience? And then give me an example of a game that really shows this. Man, you know, to... it's, it's really, really funny because uh, I think um, Mech actually commented on something I was planning to comment. It's when a game has a gimmick and, like, you see other games try to copy that gimmick. And um, I don't know if this will probably answer the question or not, but this is just what was on my mind when he was just making his, his comment. Um, it was back in the good old days where Guitar Hero came out. Okay. And uh, 
you know, it was really fun. Like, you know, like when you incorporated music in it and like, you know, in the video games and stuff like that. And it it made you become better at something. You know, it made you want to learn the instrument. In it did. Way. No, it really inspired you know, me. Um, however, then you actually had games like Rock Band come out. Mm -hmm. And then you had, they took it a step further and even had a game rap star come out <laughs> and then, you like, know yeah i miss rap star dude. i missed that one completely i have not i, I didn't even play it okay. but it, it's just like they they copied like you could see what they're trying to do but the thing is my, i digress the, the whole point is i think when the whole rock band thing had came out they came out with different instruments yeah and stuff like that which completely switched it up Right. And you know, you Rock know. Band was kind of my jam. Like, I like Guitar Hero, but I love uh -huh. having different options. I love someone on the yeah. drums. But again, when you have people to play with, you know? Yeah, and, and it's funny because when Rock Band came out with other instruments, then Guitar Hero came out with other instruments, yeah. too. Yeah. So it's like, okay, guys, like, what's the end game? Like, <laughs> now I got a guitar. Oh, I got a guitar, too. Oh, well, I have drums. Oh, well, I have drums, too. Oh, you have a mic, you can sing? Well, I have a mic and I can sing, too. And until the whole franchise just actually just yeah. went, you know. So they were like tr constantly trying to one up each other. One was yeah, harmonics, man. right? What was the other? What was the other group? Um, well, it's weird because Guitar Hero started with harmonics, okay, and then after I think the second F or in three, um, it was started by Activision. Oh, um, Activision, and then harmonics did rock band. Oh, okay, uh, yeah. yeah, Activision's trash. So it all makes <laughs> it makes sense now in that context, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, it's like. Yeah, that's right. I think Rock Band 3 finally ended it all at that one time when it was popular with the keyboard. Mm -hmm. And they tried to add, like, real instruments into it. Aww. Yeah, I see that. Yeah. Yeah. Like, so first much. I thought, like, oh, yeah, that's a cool concept. Now looking back. Yeah, cool. not so much. It was terrible. But that that's what really got me. Um, like, you know, that's, to me, that was subjectively a terrible game. Okay. I mean, after a while... Point the sleep. Pointless rivalry too, right? Right, but I mean, Guitar Hero when it first came out, I was game for. I thought I was like, man, this is something different. Yeah, I remember this that. Is something cool. Yeah. Like I was in elementary school, everybody was playing it, and like everybody the music. was talking about it. Yeah. The mu it got me into music, mm -hmm. like you know, like which I play for real now. So I mean, it's really cool. And I mean, when it first came out, but then like when Rock Band came out and the whole thing, and I don't know, they just really turned me off to it. And we ultimately see where they're at now because nobody plays them mm -hmm. and if they do play them i mean they obviously don't have any other games or they're piss poor or right. like they just never got rid of it so that's that's what it is for me that's okay. one of the most disappointing games i've played okay so i think you and mech touched on a, on a, a good topic there and it's something we're going to cover in another podcast uh gimmicks and gaming and and how it's affected the industry um, are they, I mean, not are they good or bad. I don't really care if they're good or bad, but like the trends, stuff like that. So we're gonna be talking about that um, as a as a yeah, team. It's like, less are they good, more are we okay with them? Yeah. Just do we want more gimmicks? Worse. You know, yeah. what gimmicks have worked in the past? So we're really gonna kind of dive into that. So we're coming on the, up to the tail end of our of our podcast. Thanks for hanging out with us so long. Um, if you're just tuning in, which would be weird, we're discussing what makes a good game or a bad game. But anyway. Um, so let's get some closing statements. I'm going to invite doors, uh, you know, through some doors back to hang out with us. Um, <laughs> just give us, give us, you know, a two minute blurb on what makes a good game or a bad game and how it's affected your gaming, dude. Again, over the years, buying games, playing games, me personally, unless it's something that I've played before, like recently we have uh, several shooters, several hunting games, RPGs that have solidly built a foundation of good games. I'm more willing to get involved with them, but some of the new titles, I'll be honest with you, they have great trailers, great playthroughs that they may show people playing, but in the end, they'll come out, you buy them, you get upset, and then it kind of deters you from wanting to try something new. So in my opinion, if I'm going out to play a game, if I don't recognize the name, I'm more willing to read the reviews, see what the gameplay was, and sometimes I honestly wait until the game has been out for a week or two to make sure there's no glitches and people aren't overly complaining about it. Regardless, people are going to complain about most games. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of one of those things where you just kind of observe, and then every once in a while you'll have a shining light game that's brand new, new series, and I'll be honest with you, it was probably two three years ago you had destiny dropping 
No one knew what yeah. it was. It looked like a great game, and it actually turned out to be a fabulous game. Even though it's had its few quirks over the years, but it's a game that you definitely got involved with just because of all the stories from everything. And now we're looking forward towards Destiny 2 that's about to drop. And I can't wait to play a game like that. Okay. Um, as far as a bad game, again, there are a few titles that are showing up and just can't wait to see how they turn out. If they are bad games, you know what? You still got to give them a try because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. you never know. A bad game for everybody else may be that game that you love. All right. So I'm going to hit you lightning round. Top three worst games you've ever played. Go. Quick. we got 10 seconds. I would say... Uh, as was mentioned, No Name Sky was horrible. No Name Sky? You can hit me no like Man that? No Man Sky. Okay, you played this. I played through it a little bit. I played like a demo version of it. Nah, which... man. Complete games you've played. Complete games? Yeah, games you've played. Top three worst games you've played. Man, you're going to have to give me a minute. All right, we'll come back to you on that one. All right, Flacco, hit us with some closing statements, man. Good games, bad games. What are your thoughts on it, bro? Uh, uh, honestly, I think a good game uh, just has to do a lot with, you know, um really the replayability of it man like i like kind of what doris said earlier i think he really hit it on the nail good what makes a good game is that game like you just get through playing and or you have to go somewhere you have to go to like run an errand and you kind of feel bummed because you just want to hop back on it again <laughs> yeah so that's i think what makes a good game um something that always gives you new experiences something that you can play with your friends and something that you, you wouldn't mind playing over again, even if you had to, even if it wasn't necessarily a new experience. And I don't want to get too off topic, but I feel like Bioshock was an amazing game. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, I would I would love to play that game over and over again because there was always different routes you could take. And, mm -hmm. you know, well, when, when you play the game, it's like you can have a multitude of different powers and stuff like that. It's really cool. And the story was just amazing. But it's something that you can play over and over again, even though there's not anything else new. So let me ask you this. Can sports games be good games, in your opinion? Because based on everything you told me this whole day, I, I, I beg to know the answer to that. Mm, do you really want my subjective opinion? This is this is a 100% opinion piece. Okay, in your opinion, well, for me, <laughs> can sports games be good games? I'm going to say the same thing that uh, I said to my cousin back when I was 10 years old. If I wanted to play sports, I'd go outside and play for real. Okay, there you have it, folks. Flacco has spoken. You said you would play a game that's a good game even if you didn't have to. So, and I, I said what? Shock, like almost immediately. So, would you kindly go get me a beer? Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Is that a Bioshock joke? <laughs> yeah, would you kindly... It's a main... It's a joke. Oh, okay. We'll talk about it after. All right, yeah, yeah no doubt. Sure. Not, not a problem. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh... So, sports games, nah. For me, I'm sorry. Like, I mean, Madden might be an exception, but then again, there's Is only so many... Not it's really. It's a sports game, dude. Not really. <laughs> it's there's probably, no like, the flagship sports game. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. I mean, there's only so many times you can play it by yourself. Like, you can only play 2K so many, so times, many times by dude. yourself. FIFA, so I mean, if times. you're with the homies, like, that's one thing. But yeah. if you're just by yourself on a Saturday night, you got okay. nothing to do. you just cooped up in the house. Right. I'm not putting it in FIFA, man. Okay. I'm trying to blow some stuff up. <laughs> All right, man. <laughs> Go ahead, man. Jump on this. Way. Give us a wrap up on good games versus bad games, man. How you look at it? Well, I suppose I would say now, as far as my standards of like good versus subjective, or, I mean good versus bad. Mm -hmm. Um, I will say most games would fit in the good to average category than bad, because as I mentioned before, they have a tangible goal. You know, an obtainable goal, I should say. Right. Um, when games have a goal that's absurdly frustrating to obtain, yeah, so it's like good games are very admittedly part, they're in part subjective, but I'm willing to give more games a pass in the good category okay. if I can at least somewhat enjoy them. Alright, so if you could objectively see where they tried to hit that, you can yeah. put them in, okay. I, I do value, uh, I, I tend to to value attempts at mm -hmm. being good over sometimes over just being good okay top three games of all time for you three three games of all time yep top three games of all time for you okay um metroid prime mm -hmm. uh, why quick why? because it was a wonderful experience okay next okay. um star fox 64 because it just 
it was one of my first introductions to game and games, and um, it's one of the few that I really pick, was able to pick apart mm -hmm. when I first really got into games that made me uh, really enjoy you know, in the first place. Okay. Because right. the baby branch is more of a retro. And, and, and also in the Shin Megami Tensei franchise, mm -hmm. uh, SMT4. Okay. Because it taught me something about myself. Got gotcha. you. All right. So it taught me. It, it taught me some of my opinions. And that lines up with your principles you mentioned earlier. Yeah. Cool. All right. Um, Meg. I mean, uh, I'm sorry. Doors. You get them three worst games of all time. Uh, I can. To be honest, I can picture them, but remembering the name. Um, I would say as a younger kid, I used to not really like games like uh, Double Dragon. For the fact that it was just so hard for me. Getting older, you learn that some of them are just very simple-minded. You come back and play them, they still suck. Yeah. Um, I think of so a game. I think of a game like uh, Nothing Contra, changed. I just got a, older. Back in the day when it was on the NES, it was a fabulous game. You spent hours playing it, but they tried to bring it back to the modern-day consoles, and it just sucked. Okay, so. Double Dragon, Modern Contra, what's the other top three worst game of all time um, for you? Gosh, what was the game called? It was a recent game they just dropped. It's called, um, I think it's called like Time Breaker or something along those lines where you have the ability to stop time. Oh, I remember but, that. Time Shift? Uh, it may have been, <laughs> but it was just the fact that it sucked. Like, it was a, sh it was a shooter, you're playing it, and... The time shift never really worked how it should work. And, I mean, even though, like, the cutscenes were phenomenal, but the gameplay, overall, the story sucked. <laughs> the gameplay sucked. And to be honest, if they just made it into a movie, it probably would have been better. <laughs> All right. Yo, one man, one man went in. All right, so that just about does it for... Hey, hey, hey. What? You haven't chimed in. Oh, this. man. What's the question? <laughs> Who asked it. Uh, yeah, well, you should know it by now. All right, so good and bad games. Again, I mean, in, in the history of gaming for me, it's always been defined by, like I said, the accomplishments you get while you're gaming, which is a personal feeling. But also, I, you know, after listening to you guys and really thinking about my experiences, the the memories you can create while, green, while gaming, I think that are the most important. Whether it's personal or with your friends, I think the way it impacts how you put the controller down is what makes the best kind of games for me. Um, I've played terrible games that still impacted me. Um, I it was a game uh, by the guy who made Silent Hill and you ran around a hallway for hours and every time you ran the hallway, it got danker and danker and just ridiculous. That game impacted me and it was scary, but it freaked me out. And that left me with a memory, you know? I would never play the game because I don't play scary games, but yeah, yeah, exactly. But um, then there's games like... Um, but like Tech Mobile, who didn't impact me at all, but they have a special place in my heart because of who I played it with. So at the end of the day, you know, I'm looking at games like Smash Brothers One, um, even even Melee for the people I was able to play it with. I mean, me and Flacco, we were able to play that a long time ago. Um, Tekken, you know, Soul mm. Calibur, um, yeah. things that brought people together. Marvelous Capcom, things you played in the arcade. Those to me will always be considered good games for the simple fact that they hit my criteria. I feel like I accomplished something when I beat somebody. I created new memories when I was gaming. Um, as far as bad games go, um, games with forgettable experiences, you know, kind of like you said, games that made me uh, really just never want to touch the genre again, and games that were ruined by their publishers. Like, they went downhill after a sequel or two. Too many sequels can ruin a game. Um, Speaking of which, that's going to be one of our things we're going to discuss. Yeah, we're definitely going to be discussing that. Um, and, that and that one we're going to do some research for you guys on and really look into the impact that it's had. Yeah, exactly. But, um... All right, so that that's my kind of opinion on it. If you want to hit me a lightning round question, we have a little bit of time. Yeah, what are your top three mediocre games you can think of Actually, that you played on a Tuesday? <laughs> okay, let me let me pocket that one. What were you gonna <laughs> on say? On a Tuesday, <laughs> I got so the games going on up. <laughs> so <laughs> um, I, I just had a quick, I, I just had a quick, um, maybe a quick topic we could throw for next time. Um, why is it that mo majority of movie games are so terrible? Getting to that later. That is, that is Cause that's, subjective. that's an opinion. That's an opinion. Yep. However, it's an opinion that I'm sure a lot of people can agree with. Doesn't make it right. It doesn't make it right. But one thing, <laughs> well, one exception I will say is Spider-Man. I will say that and I will stand by Spider-Man what, too? For PlayStation? All of them. Not all of them. No, all the movie Spider-Mans. All yeah. the movie games Spider-Man. Not all of them, dude. One, two, three. I had a good time. Those, those same people will turn against you on three. 
Really? Tell you, I played you, Spider-Man 3. They'll tell, tell you 2 was the best. 2 was pretty good. <laughs> yeah, 2 was, was pretty good, yeah, man. Okay, See? But, um, alright, so what was your question, Mech? Yeah, what was your, what was your, what was your uh, question again, Mech? Let me contemplate it one more time. Okay. We'll just say, uh, <laughs> top 3 games with forgettable experiences. Okay. Sonic and Knuckles. That was forgettable. Forgettable experience. Yes. Yes. Because, uh, it didn't matter. You would just plug it into Sonic 2 or Sonic 3, and then that became the experience. Mm, okay. So the actual Sonic Knuckles, Sonic Knuckles levels, I, could, I don't know what, I don't remember. Forgettable. Um, Altered Beast, forgettable experience for Sega. Um, Gauntlet Legends, forgettable experience. Oh, really? Yep, Golden Axe, yeah. Not because they weren't fun. It was just kind of forgettable. Like, yeah. okay, well, well name, name two of the characters. Oh, the guy that threw the things? Yeah, that's every character. They all have the same mechanics. Fair, fair enough, but if they were forgettable yeah, experiences, yeah. How, can you, how can you remember them? Because I had to answer the question. I couldn't say that game. <laughs> that one game that I played. That's too easy. <laughs> but, um, again, not forgettable games or titles per se, but the experience was forgettable. Like, yeah, you don't remember how it was. I don't need a remaster of Altered Beast, you know? Like, that's true. Because in that case, maybe sometimes a bad game that stands out Maybe maybe better than a bad game that doesn't. Right. So it's kind of like the so bad it's good thing. Yeah, and that and that's the point of this, what we want you guys to think of. Like when you start breaking things down subjectively and objectively, what you thought may have been a bad game may not might not have been. Yeah. It just may have been a bad experience, or you didn't like it at the time. But the fact that you can hold on to it so passionately may have done its job objectively and, be, and actually been a good game for you. Yeah. Like Aladdin or, or Lion King for Game Gear, which is absolutely horrible and way too hard. Oh anyway, all right, so that does it for does it. Well, that's what editing's for, man. So this does it for our, um, our podcast today. Um, again, thank you for tuning in. Um, remember, I get sign off. We had doors. No doors. We got my boy Flacco. Is it pretty pretty, pretty Flacco? Pretty Flacco. Yeah. 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 Um, pretty Flacco. You got any social media you want to everybody check Flacco, out? Flacco. Uh, you know, shouts out to my boy. Uh, let's see, let's see. All right, so um, shout out to all my boys, you know, um, pretty Flacco. That I have copyright. That name is uh, not not mine originally, but uh, I'm gonna say that. Where where can people people who want to see more of you? Where can they find you? Oh, Instagram, 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 pretty Flacco. All right, how do you spell Flacco? Ooh, F L V C K O V emphasis on the V. And then on the pretty emphasis on the two T's, two Y's underscore. Flacco. You made that as yeah. You made you made that as complicated as possible. But that's no, cool. that's that's how you spell it. We're gonna find pretty tee boy Flacco. Not pretty boy. Oh, I know. I keep saying that. Pretty Flacco. Yeah. All right, and then of course myself, your uncle Johnny, um, and your cousin Mac, your, your nephew Mac. We're gonna be uh, we're gonna be back uh, with more of our playthroughs of Persona and some other cool content. Yeah, I mean, we're gonna get into all that this time, whether you want to. Some other time, yeah. All right, some other time. Uh, anyway, so again, thanks for tuning in, and continue to be good to each other.